going with this one. Here it is. Put it on my desktop. Oh, I don't mind that little spot of something has dropped on this. Uh, so I found this this image of some mushrooms. Uh, it's over there. Uh, loosely copied it here. I dropped off a few mushrooms on the side. Let's not count that. And had a great time uh, painting this. Thirsty is you here. It's watercolor party time. Woo! Uh, so let's have some fun painting some mushrooms. Let me get this out of the way. Got some stuff on my desk that's kind of blocking me in. I've, I've pre-drawn this one here. And here's going to be no sound. How can there be no sound? No sound, really? Oh, wait, is the sound is fixed. There was no sound, now there is sound? I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anyways, you're saying it's fixed. It's fixed. Maybe I didn't have sound on when it was just my face. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so let's get going with this one. So the paper that I'm using here today is uh, Strathmore 400 series uh, watercolor paper. This is cold pressed. I can tell by the way I feel the paper. Strathmore paper has a certain feel to it. Cali flowers, you can hear fine. Great. Sound is good. Mar... Mar... I don't... Oh, I'm terrible with names. Spelling is... Spelling is not my strong suit. Um, over here on the side, the uh, paints that I'm going to be using are my normal M. Graham paints. Uh, I can talk to you about the colors of these as we go along. If Anybody has an interest in uh, talking about paints, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about them. Uh, color around tin that I'm using, and for the most part, I'm going to be using my King Art brushes. You are using, okay, perfect, years ago by Margaret. Margaret, I can handle. <laughs> it's going to be a long day for me, and uh, uh, Margaret is a fantastic name. Margaret, thank you <laughs> for joining me. <clears throat> and thank you for oh, giving me a name I can handle. <laughs> I'm going to mix up. I'm going to start with a little bit of my thalo green here. I love my thalo green. Uh, if you're not used to using thalo green, I would suggest maybe try it out a little bit. Thalo green is actually a lovely color. It is a little strong, but it plays well with others. Oh, you almost have to mix thalo green, I believe, uh, to, to get the best out of it. Because it is so strong, it can really be overpowering. I mixed in a little bit of, I've got some gamboge here, some new gamboge. And this is a little bit of um, uh, Fu Fu Hansa yellow. There we go. Here, let me get some of that green out of there and put it in here. I wanted just a really light uh, color. I'm going to start by putting in my background here. And uh, I turn my paper over. It's just a little bit easier to uh, make a paint stroke going uh, this way when it's upside down for me. I'll turn my page uh, probably a few times during this painting. Uh, I'm not worried too much. Maybe I'll drop in some other colors. I've got some other greens in here. We can drop in just to make this a, a somewhat modeled background back here. Maybe even a few blues we can drop in here and there. Uh, I don't want to add any detail to the background. I don't want it to be too heavy. I want a nice light background here. Just something that's behind these mushrooms. It doesn't really matter what's back there. Uh, what's, what's my image? My reference image looks like they've got some ochres in there. Maybe a few browns and some greens. Uh, we can add some of that in here. It's just some general woodland colors. Uh, behind this just to make it you know a nice uh a nice cozy scene back here for our mushrooms i'm interested in colors i'm a beginner and i'm not sure which to buy um martha if you are not sure which to buy i've got an extra hour that i'm not doing anything but a little painting here and i'm going to talk your ear off about paints <laughs> oops let me move this up so you all can see 
Uh, I love talking paints. Uh, so, uh, Martha, let me ask you this. What kind of paints uh, do you have on your, on your palette right now? Uh, do you have, are, are you looking for a, a professional set? Do you want some really intense colors? Are you looking for a good quality um, studio set or a student set? Or, you know, what are, we, what are we talking about? What are you looking, what are you looking for? You probably just want to get what's the biggest bang for your buck here. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, uh, that was Callie. As I said, Martha, I'm totally sorry about that. Okay, so we've got a nice little background on here. Uh, Callie, what are you, what, what kinds of things are you looking for? Because um, if you go with professional quality paints like the M. Graham, they'll last you a long time, but they are expensive. They're not cheap. Daniel Smith, fantastic paints, not cheap. Um Senel, yay, very expensive, old Hall, expensive, old Holland, uh, super expensive, even Holbein come in little tubes, five milliliter tubes, they're really expensive, but they're, they're a very good paint, and a little goes a long way with those, um, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm doing what we call stalling, by myself a little bit of time. I'm not worried about uh, mixing any colors here and here. I'm gonna paint the foreground here in just a second, but if I can give just a little bit of time, that'll allow this edge to dry and give me a, uh, a hard edge there, kind of a little barrier, so my colors don't run too much. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna mix up, oh, just some some color here. This is This is burnt umber right here. And I've got some yellow ochre over here. Uh, Callie, so I, would, I will say this. Um, you're not sure which to buy. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some advice if, if you were me. <laughs> it's always kind of dangerous because I know that you're not me. Um, but since you asked... Now, I am not the biggest fan. I have, I have many of them, but I'm not the biggest fan of, of cakes, or watercolor cakes. I have some Windsor Cotman. I'm looking to buy individual colors that are strong and can be pretty bright but light fast, too. I'm not sure. I like granulation. <laughs> You're not sure if you like granulation. I get that. Granulation is an interesting uh, thing in and of itself. Um, but you can kind of get around granulation. Actually, granulation in lots of instances is really cool. But you can get around it to some uh, extent by um, using a, a different type of paper, right? If you use some uh, hot press paper, uh, it will be much smoother and... Uh, you won't have nearly as much granulation. But if you use rough paper or cold-pressed paper, you're going to have a lot more granulation, just naturally. That's, that's how it works with that paper. Um, but let's get back to, you have, you have Windsor Newton Cotman uh, paints that you're looking to buy, and Windsor Newton Cotman are actually quite good paints. Now, here's something you're going to want to think about as you are um, delving into your painting career and whether you're going to have a painting career as a professional or whether you're going to have a painting career as, uh, an <laughs> as an addict like me, someone who just really enjoys painting for the, for the fun of the painting. Um, Windsor & Newton paints, when they dry... They get very hard. Uh, this includes the Cotman paints. The Cotman brand is a, I guess what's considered a student grade paint. And don't let that throw you. 
That's, that's neither good nor bad. That's just a label. There are some fantastic student grade paints. And there are some not so fantastic professional grade paints. It doesn't, it's just a label. In general, it means that the professional grade paints have more pigment in the actual um, paint and less filler. Uh, but there are, as I said, plenty of student grade paints that have enough pigment in there that you're, it, for all intents and purposes, you're not going to notice the difference between the two of them. Okay, as I as I move down the side here, I'm painting the background. Uh, the in essence, the dirt or the rocks or the the decaying uh, tree matter, whatever this is, the log or something, whatever these mushrooms are growing out of. As I'm moving to the foreground here, I'm gonna I'm just gonna add a little bit of red to this, right? The red is gonna help to warm up the front, and it's gonna bring the bottom of the front of this picture to us. Okay, that's a, that's a little tip. You don't have to make it super red so that it's, you know, like in your face red, but just even a little bit of red will really help, um, will help that get there. So uh, where I was going with the paint, so let me a little, get a little bit more green in here too. Um, Windsor and Newton, uh, they're, they're artist grade paints and the cotton paints dry and get quite hard. And if you look at the palette that I'm using here, I haven't touched most of these. I don't know if you can see a little bit. I'm looking on my screen, a little bit of it you can see. Most of the paints here on my tray, and I'll, I'll say I did use them last night, uh, but for the most part, um, I haven't used all of them since probably Saturday, and you can see some of them are quite shiny, right? You can see some sun, some, some, sun, some light shining off a few of these. Uh, that's because these are, these have a lot of honey in them, and the honey keeps them moist. The Windsor & Newton ones don't use honey, and they dry out a lot more, and they get a lot harder. Now, don't, oh, Natalie, nice to, nice that you can join. Thank you. Uh, don't let the hardness throw you. It's just a preference. Um, uh, some people like the hardness because uh, it takes a moment or two to re-wet the paints. And the first little bit that you wet and you put on seems to come out a lot lighter. And if, you, if, if you're a little heavy-handed like I am, sometimes the first little bit is too much. Um... Of, of color that you want to put on there. So, so there's a lot of that. Now, I, I do like the Cotman color, right? I think that uh, Cotman has very nice color and they're very pigmented for what you get, right? I will say that. Um, I wanted to buy the Art Whale set. People say that's fantastic. I haven't been able to get to that yet, but people really seem to like that. And while we're talking about this, I'm going to mix up kind of a gray color, right? Yellow ochre, a little bit of Payne's gray. I just want to, um, a yellow ochre, when it in its straight form, um, is, is, I don't think it's the most natural, but I want to get a little bit of a little bit of color on this that's not this bright, bright thing here. Uh, you, Natalie, you love the Artwell set. Okay, I haven't been able to get the Artwell set yet um, because, well, just because <laughs> I would love to get the Artwell set. I haven't gotten around to getting the Artwell set yet. I do want to try it out. I do know that a lot of people love it. Uh, I'm trying, I'm looking over here because this is where all my paints are, and I'm trying to think what other sets of paints... I have, um, I, ha I have a whole bunch, I have the Mission Gold set, uh, a little pricey, but again, it's going to go a long way, the Mission Gold set, 
is another wonderful set. Um, I've heard good things about the Paul Rubens set too. Natalie, I also like the Frugal Crafter. Lindsay's recommendations are pretty. Oh, on, of the pretty excellent paints. Yes, that's another one. Pretty excellent paints. Who said something here? Artie Ross says you love M Grams. How could you not not love M Grams? I, I, I mean, obviously, I use M Gram paints a lot. Um, I have. I will say this. Let me uh, let me say this, Callie. I bought. This might be a determining factor for you. Uh, I'll tell you this, and then I'm going to tell you another story too. I bought my first tube. Now the tube of the M Gram paints, and I like I said, they're expensive. But I bet I bought it. 10 years ago, my uh, ultramarine blue, I have it right here. And I just about a month ago or so had to reorder because it because it's so pigmented, it lasts so long that you don't have to use that much. Uh, it, it's a and it's a wonderful color. It is a little granulating, however, so there is that to consider. Uh, I guess my first, the first full set that I had, and I've had I've had lots of Cotman sets. I have the little travel sets. Uh, where am I? Where am I? The little square travel sets of Cotman paints. Fantastic little set, uh, but they are cakes. Um, I bought the Van Gogh set of paints. That's what it was. It's Van Gogh. Set they came in their own travel tin. I say tin, it's a you know, it's a plastic tin like they all come in. And I painted the heck out of that thing. <laughs> I used all of those paints, they were gone uh, by the time I ever you know got around to buy more. They were, I mean, I had you know, dug in them to get every little ounce of paint out of there. Probably wore the nub off of a, a number of brushes trying to get it out. Um, and you talked about color fastness. I, I, have, I have had a number of paints, painting, a number of paintings hanging in my office at, at my work, at my day job, that I painted with those Van Gogh paints, and they're still there, and they still look like they are brand new. And they're uh, they're they're just like the Cotmans. They're uh, I would say they're a higher end student grade. Let's see, Natalie. I started with Cotmans, but they always seem kind of dull. Interesting. Seem kind of dull. I don't know. I don't know that I noticed uh, the Cotman's being dull. I don't recall that. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. That isn't true. I. I just don't recall that. Um, art whales are a set of tubes on Amazon. Yeah, the art whale ones are are relatively uh, inexpensive, and everybody that I've known that has tried them loves them. Let's see, my first Natalie, Natalie, your first favorite Natalie, were the Turners from Jerry's Art Arama. Turners, one brand I have not tried, although I was about to buy the Turner gouache set, but I, I haven't done that. Let's see. Thank you. Is Art Whale a brand? Yes, yes. I was thinking Royal Talons Van Gogh too. Uh, yes, so like I said, the, the Van Gogh ones were the ones I I got. I personally use those, and I really like those, I have to say. Um, but you've got some good suggestions there. And with both of them, or with, with both of them, with all of them, they come in both tubes and, um, in 
and pans and uh, take it for what you want. There's goods and bads of both. Uh, the only thing I would suggest to you is to not not buy like an El Cheapo set. Um, you know, pay more than pay more than twenty dollars for. Oh, I you know I shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, what is the, what is? Hold on one second. <laughs> Here you go. I have this set. Oh, how about this? I have this. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I have this set. This is... Okay. This is them. <laughs> uh, this is Prima um, Art Supplies. And Prima makes a lot of watercolor uh, sets. You can buy them. Uh, they probably have 20 different sets of these with different color combinations. I have this one. It comes in in this nice little travel tin, uh, and this is this is a, a, a conglomeration of two different sets put together. So I think there should be twelve, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's fourteen in here. Um, these are all artificial colors, right? There's nothing natural about these. These are all made out of some chemical. And with that, you get some goods and bads. Most of these, most of the M. Grams, most of the Daniel Smith, most of the Windsor Newton ones are all made out of a natural product. I have, uh, let's see. Do I have one? Oh, uh, not really. Yes, right here. Quinacridone Rose. Quinacridone is a synthetic chemical that makes a reddish, or it can make a different uh, hues, but it's a synthetic pigment. I suspect uh, these are a lot of quinacridone colors in here. Um, and this this set with the tin was 20 bucks. They're pretty vibrant colors. Uh, the only problem with these is who somebody said something about chalkiness. If you start layering this, these colors one on top of another on top of another, they do start to get a little bit chalky. But if if that's in your in your price range and you're really uh, don't want to spend much. You can get something as cheap as that. Are Windsor and Newtons kind of chalky compared to other brands? Actually, the Windsor Newton Cotmans are pretty good compared to other brands. Uh, I should say. And let's see. I just happen to have this sitting around. I was working on this the other day. A baseball mitt. Um, and I've done, well, let's see. I've got one, two. I've got three layers on around here. And normally if it gets a little chalky... You, it'll come right off, but ugh, it's got a little, little re-wetting. Uh, but these ones are pretty good. There's no chalkiness in, in these over here. Now, have I talked long enough and gotten this dry enough that I can go on to <laughs> the next layer? That's my real question. Uh, the Art Whale set of 24 tubes, 36 bucks on Amazon. That actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> I, I'll have to say, that actually sounds pretty good. Okay, so uh, I'm considering this, right? We, we've just done this. How long have we been here now? 20 minutes, 20, 24 minutes. And I'm done with my first layer of paint on here. Um, so now I'm going to go on and start to put on a few details, right? But this is my next thing I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is underneath all of the caps... Right, so hey, you got a number of mushroom caps here. Uh, along these stems, I'm going to start to add some depth and definition so that these look like they're round. Okay, that's my that is going to be my step number two. Uh, I've I've just added a little bit of burnt umber <laughs> to my mix of paint that was here. So the fact that I'm mixing it into what was there should help it stay, you know, relatively in the same family. And I'm not going to worry about any detail on this other than making these look rounded. Okay, so everything that is in a bit of shadow gets this layer of paint. And that comes in something like this. 
that probably shouldn't be straight across and down the side here. Uh, my light is going to be coming in in this direction. Uh, uh, so there we go. And Callie, by the way, Callie, great question. Keep asking questions. If you're new to watercolor painting, the one thing I'm going to encourage you to do, continue asking questions. You can, you can ask questions of me if you I would encourage you, you know, if you see other people online, you're watching other videos, just keep asking questions. If there's, if there's one thing I have found out about the watercolor community is that um, there are so many people willing to help out because I think everybody who paints watercolors wants uh, other people to be able to paint and enjoy watercolors the way we do. Right, I know I do. I can't. I maybe I can't speak for everybody, but I would hope that most people would want that. We want we want to uh, encourage those things that we enjoy, and I really enjoy it. So, if you ever find yourself with a question, um, shoot it off to me or or another one of your favorite artists, and ask them. And I'd be I'd be shocked if somebody did not take the time uh, to respond to you with an answer because that's that's just kind of how I found the watercolor community here online not necessarily in or on YouTube but uh, in many places to be I just want to want to share a little watercolor love with everybody Let's see so maybe this this one I wraps around this way Something like that. I hope I'm not moving this too far off screen so that everybody can see this. I'm just putting on color in the shape of the shadow. And then I'm taking away that hard edge. It's not, I'm not doing any kind of rocket surgery here or anything. Just making a, a gentle shadow here, just like that. See, and these two are already kind of look like they've got some dimension going on with them. Now, this paper that I'm using is, uh, what did I say this was? This was Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper, and so it's a... It's a wood pulp based paper and as such has slightly different characteristics than a cotton paper. All right, so many people want to use cotton paper and that's fine. You can use cotton paper, but you just have to realize it has slightly different characteristics. And one of the characteristics of a wood pulp paper is that uh, water continues to bleed more than it does on a cotton. So, <clears throat> uh, Kelly, that's super nice. You have so many, you have a lot of questions. Throw them out there. Let's, I'll bet you some, either I'll answer them or somebody here in chat will answer them. Throw out some questions. This is, this is one of the reasons why, <clears throat> why I love doing these live streams. I've said, I've said this from the beginning. It's, it's the questions, the interactions, uh, the ability to to share, uh, you know, that little bit. I, I'm not going to say I'm super knowledgeable or the most knowledgeable about watercolors or anything like that. I, I have a great passion for watercolors and a, and a little bit of knowledge, and I'm happy I'm happy to share that with whoever I can, and and it's, it's you know it's enjoyable for me to do that. So uh, let's see, <laughs> you have crickets in your house. I wish I had crickets. Crickets are fun. They're so, they're one of those uh, summer sounds, springtime summer sounds that I don't know, I don't always get here at my house. I wish I did. So don't roust them out too much. Crickets are fun. <laughs> Natalie, you don't like crickets? Oh man. A lot of fun. 
Okay, I'm just going to continue. Ah, see, look at this one. See, I had uh, it, this. This is creeping back in here. It is slowly creeping. Not at bedtime. <laughs> that's definitely that's funny. Uh, Artie, I pulled out a very old painting that I loved. The pink color is now faded. Uh oh, use very cheap colors. Oh uh, no. Now I now you only use professional paints. Oh, that's disheartening to know that your colors have faded. Uh, I I'll tell you a story when when we bought when my wife and I bought the house that uh, we live in right now. We we bought some artwork to go in our house very early on. And a couple of the pieces that we bought were watercolors. And we took them to, shoot, I'm pretty sure we took them to Michael's and had them framed and had the low EV glass put on them and whatnot, you know, hoping that they would stay nice and vibrant for years and years to come. And I looked at them the other day and, uh-oh, uh-oh, whatever paint they used, it didn't stay. We're losing some color already, and it's... Oh, it's disappointing. I mean, it's disappointing for me. I can imagine for you, you put all that hard work into it, and it feels like it was all for naught sometimes. But I try to look at it this way. You can, you can tell me I'm a nut <laughs> if you want. Um... I always look at it as though, you know what? I was I was able to paint this once. I ought to be able to paint this again. <laughs> it is it's super frustrating. I don't want to I don't want to belittle the fact that you had a, a nice piece of art that is now faded. And that's one of the drawbacks. That's one of the hard things to deal with with watercolors. But I bet if you tried it again, you could do it again. Um Let's see, um, bu, 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 what do you, uh, Cal, I know what you mean, Margaret. I'm, oh, Mar oh Mar I missed this, I missed a comment. I'm a beginner as well. One goal of mine, apart from painting more often, is to get better with negative space. Uh, <laughs> yeah, painting negatively is tough. It's not, it's, it's not the simplest thing. Um, I don't know that I have any really great advice for you on how to, how to do that. That's going to be more practice. It gets, you know what I would do? This, well, I, cause I do a lot of it now. Um, I'm looking to see if I have a painting of a bird. A lot of the feathers I paint on birds I only do with negative space, and oftentimes I don't draw the whole feather on before I paint it. And I think that has helped me quite a bit with, with understanding negative space, painting everything that's not the feather on, on, let's say, the back of a bird or the wing of a bird or something like that. Take it slow. Give it a chance, and am I am I on screen? Can you guys see this? I hope you guys can see this. And um, paint something you know and like. Uh, opera pink is very popular, but very fugitive. Uh, I don't. I have opera pink. I, where's my opera pink? Oh, I have a. I got a Daniel. S Daniel Smith set of paints that's Jen Haynes. And it had opera pink in it. I think I've used it to paint the um, I've used it to paint the uh, icing <laughs> on some donuts. That's what I've painted with it. Um uh, it I don't I haven't that's one color I haven't bought into using that I probably should. <laughs> There's lots of things. I have a fuchsia tree. I could I could be painting, but I don't. That opera pink, it's it's like 
uh, phthalo green. Man, it's a strong color. And if you're not ready for it, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, uh, Ari, you are going to paint it? Good for you. Or repaint it, I should say. Good for you. I'm I'm all for that. And you know what the you know what the good thing is is probably the first time you painted it, uh, you didn't know half as much as you do now, and so you're going to be better equipped to do an even better painting this time around. So we're all expecting to see <laughs> Louvre quality, Smithsonian quality art art from you, Artie. We all know that you can do it. Let's see. I think this one goes. Here. I don't. Know, I got a couple of. I've got a couple of stems in here. I'm not really sure where they go to. This always happens with me when I draw them. I go, oh yeah, this this stem goes with that, or this petal goes on that flower. Not a big deal. I'll just put it on here, and then pretty soon I've forgotten which goes with which. <laughs> in the end, I really don't think it matters a whole lot. Um, unless I tell somebody, and that's kind of a lesson everybody can learn. Unless you tell somebody what they need to look for in your painting, everybody's going to take away something different. And I'll bet you, if you don't tell anybody you made a mistake in a painting, which is not... You know, a mistake isn't a mistake. I think I've talked about it. Mistakes aren't mistakes. Mistakes are just something that happens along the way to getting your painting done, right? We all do them. We all, uh, we all have them. It's not a big deal. There's not one artist anywhere. There's not one person anywhere who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. But in a lot of professions, you don't call them mistakes, right? It's just something that happens on the way of getting done what you need to do, and you just work around it and go on and, and do what you need to do and and so be it. If it's only an art that we go, oh, God, I made this mistake. And then you feel the need to call attention to it to everybody. Ah, we all need to get away from doing that. It's just, it's just something that happened on the way to getting your painting done. And am I down too low for anybody here to move this up. Oh, I, did, I mixed up some extra color here, and I didn't quite get the color the same. All right, this is a, this has got much more of the burnt orange in it. Uh, sorry, not burnt orange, burnt umber. I don't have burnt orange on my palette. Uh, and a little less of the, the gray that's here. What's in your brown? <laughs> Artie, thank you for the courage. You're totally welcome, Artie. I, I have 100% faith in you. Natalie, what's what's in your brown tonight? It's going on neutral looking and drying more reddish. Okay, so the, the brown that I'm using here, this is a mixture of burnt umber, a little bit of yellow ochre here, threw that in, and then to kind of knock that color down a little bit, the thing maybe I didn't do in this last little puddle, I just threw a little bit of this Payne's Gray in there. And that knocked, that, it just knocks that color down a little bit. Um, and I'm using that, I'm using this color just to put in, so I don't want to, I don't want to touch anything that's wet here. I, I'm using this just to put in, um, the shadow area, right? I, maybe we'll come back into another layer of shadow or sp specific in a spot here or there. Um, but it's just my shadow color right now. And that one's a little different. And the one over here is a little different. You know what? That's what happens in nature. Everything's just a little different. Maybe there's a little something, I don't know, a little bit of right light reflecting on that a little differently. Oh, Artie, there you go. Callie's got a great question for you. How are you how are you gonna do this? Are you gonna are you gonna repaint the whole thing? Or are you just gonna touch up uh, the existing painting? Oh, it's the Payne's gray. You can see when it's wet. Uh, yeah, I'll say I will, I'll say this. Um, my what is that set? My Holbein set has 
this wonderful yellow gray color. <laughs> oh, Kelly, you're watching it. It's looking great. Oh, thank you. Um, my whole bind set has this wonderful yellow, gray, yellow. Oh my God. What did I, I just said it before? Gray, ochre, ochre, gray, yellow, gray. I don't know. It's a color. It's, it's basically a mixture of Payne's gray, or it could be Davy's gray, some kind of gray and yellow ochre. And when I got that set, I looked at that and I went, there's no way I'm ever going to use this. It's, it looks so dull and so flat. I can't imagine why they would ever put it in this set. It's just, it's out of place. It looks weird. Um, I'm not going to use it. And then it was on my palette, so of course I used it. <laughs> and I kind of went, you know what? That's a brilliant, that's a brilliant color combination. It really, it, it looks a little funny when it's wet. It sounds a little funny when you, when you talk about it. But it really does turn into a kind of a nice, a nice color. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it's a lovely. Oh, I'm just mixing a little color back here. Oh, I got a little too much green in there. I've got this space. Let me do use the back. If I got this space here, that I guess I could make the same color, but it would have to be darker. This is what I'm. This is what I'm thinking, right? If I make it darker, it's got to be darker than this mushroom. It's obviously going to be darker than this one. And I've got this space, too. It's, it's got to be darker than the two adjacent ones, right? You don't want to have a dark next to a dark. I mean, you can have a dark next to a dark. It just looks a little funny from time to time. So I was hoping to put a dark um, next to a slightly different color dark. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I'm gonna, uh, Artie, you're going to repaint... Oh, see, there you go, right? You've got some ideas on how to do it now. That happens. It comes with a little time and experience. I've done the same thing. I, I've, I've looked through an old book of paintings, and I'll go, why did I do it that way? God, if I just did it this way, this would be so cool. And then you try it out, and you get to apply. You know, we learn. We don't learn in a linear fashion, and so when you... So there's a little too much green in this for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to change the color right on the, on the page here, and, and it'll turn out fine. Uh, we don't learn in a linear fashion, so you know, we learn a step here and a step there, and we apply it, and we do a step here and a step there, and then you look back and you go, holy cow, it seems like only a week ago I was doing this a different way, or I... You know, two years ago, I've been doing this the same way for a long time, and now, now I'm doing it totally different, and it works out. It looks really great or interesting or whatnot. Um, it's just so interesting to, to go back and try to re recreate something, and I've tried it, and about half the time I go back and I recreate it, and I do it differently, and I go, God, why didn't I do it this way the first time? This looks so neat, or this looks so interesting. Or, or some such thing as that. Okay, so here we go. Um, got all of the... Look at this. This looks like it goes on back there. I couldn't get a straighter line. A little care, Michael. Come on. There we go. So that looks like... Oh, you, you got to... There we go. Now you, now you don't have that shine on it so much. Looks like that goes on back behind there. Just it's just a little different contrast. It's not necessarily darker. So now we have uh, we've come to the point where we need to paint these mushroom caps. And if you look at the paint uh, the reference photo over there, not my big old finger. Uh, the the tops are a little blue gray, right? They look like this. Oh, here's the one I painted the other day, and it looks fine. This is just testing something out up here. Don't don't pay any attention to that. Um, it looks fine, but it doesn't look super edible to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, but that doesn't look the most edible to me. So 
So I'm going to change it a little bit here. And I'm going to mix a little bit of... Let me, let me do this. Where's the back of this page? Do a little color comparison here. I mix in a little bit of this azo orange with this burnt umber. Right, and do a mushroom cap. This is how I'm, I'm going to do this. And then a line down here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I don't want to set anything on that because that's a little bit wet. Still, I'll leave my highlight in here, something like that. Continue. And we've got, we've got this underneath. That doesn't look too bad. That looks, that to me, looks more edible. Whoops. The, whoops. Than that, right? <laughs> Is that just me? Would you rather eat a, a mushroom that has that nice brown cap like that than one that has that blue gray cap? Let's try that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> I don't. I suppose I could, I, I might get the whole thing done and then go, oh my lord, why did I do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, Artie, you could rip the faded one and have your new version emerge from beneath. Uh, <laughs> that would be weird. It'd be interesting. I've come a long way. I've learned about values, textures, lights, and shadows. Wow. Hey, Artie, <clears throat> I'm going to take your class. <laughs> If you know about all of those, oh, you can't rip it to the main main focus. If you know about all those, Artie, uh, I'm I'm taking a, a painting class from you because <laughs> sometimes I feel like I need to learn all that stuff. All right, right here's our orangey brown mixture, and again, I don't know that this is your brush has such a great point. Is it natural or synthetic? Cali? Okay, so. These are my new, I have a lot of brushes. I will take a minute to talk about brushes. I am kind of a brush snob, I will admit. Um, this is a, this is from, and I don't, I'm not getting anything from them. They did, I bought these myself. I got these from King Art. Ooh, there you go, you can see King, hopefully you can see it. King Art, if it would focus at all, somewhere. There you go, kingart.com, you can buy these. This is the 9020 series of brush. It's a synthetic brush, and it's this the 9020 series is their super pointed round brushes. They have other round brushes, and they come to a so-so point, but these ones are marketed as a pointed round. And I have eight of these brushes of various sizes. Come on, come on out. I have four of them on my painting table right now, a 12, an 8, a 4, and a 2, I believe. Yep, a 12, an 8, a 4, and a 2. And I love these brushes. They do. They come to a fantastic point. They hold a good amount of water. They don't hold as much as, as uh, let's say, a squirrel hairbrush. But if you don't want to use a natural hairbrush, I get that. For a synthetic brush, these hold quite a bit of water. Uh, and more importantly, they release the water smoothly in a, in a nice, smooth form. It's not all in one blob. Uh, so these are fantastic. I've always been a little reticent to buy synthetic brushes because I have a number of them, and they get a big hook on the end. You use them for a while, and they get a big hook. And then you've either got to clip it or cut it, and then your point never is the same, and then you feel like you've wasted your money on that brush. Um, and so I, I don't, I haven't in the past liked to use synthetic brushes, but I took a chance on these. Again, I bought them from King Art. I got the 9020. I bought the whole set. It's eight brushes, and um, I think they are fantastic, right? 
I do like, I've got another one up here. I've got brushes everywhere. I've got, I do love these brushes, these quill brushes. Um, I think they're fantastic. Some of them, the bristles, the squirrel bristles are a little soft. I like just a little more spring in them than mine. So I've got those. I was using these earlier, these Chinese Sumi brushes. I've got a couple of them here. I said, man, I got more than a couple of them here that I was using earlier. I'll, t I <laughs> I'll talk about brushes a lot more than I will talk about paint. I love talking about paint, but I love talking about brushes. I'll talk about brushes all day long. And then I've got this one. This is this is one I love. This is a Raphael quill brush. It is a soft, um, soft synthetic. It it's a squirrel hair synthetic. It holds a ton of water. This brush does, and and it's made by Raphael. And I think this brush alone was about forty bucks. It's a size four. It's not cheap, but it's that one. That one uh, is fantastic. Um, Let's see. Wow, I love how long those brushes are. Almost like a dagger. Uh, the, the, oh, these, uh, these Sumi brushes. Yeah, the Sumi brushes are really long. And uh, I don't know why they're that long. I think, I think people hold them back here when they paint um, characters with them. But I, I, um, I hold them down mid-barrel like I hold these to paint with. Okay. Uh, so here's where we're at. This is what I'm going to do for each of these. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to wet part of this and I'll just wet the whole cap on this. There we go. Wet that whole cap. And I want, I'm going to do this because I want to make sure that my color is running around here. I want this color to run, run, run. I'm going to put it on a heavier layer on the outside and it's going to run towards the center and then I can lab accident. Hello. <laughs> I've been an excellent instructor. Uh, if, if that's true, uh, it's because of my enthusiasm for the subject. And I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean mushrooms. <laughs> uh, and now that this is running to the center, I'm just going to, I'm just going to nudge this a little bit. It's going to find and settle on its own where it wants to. Come on. There we go. And just allowing it to do this. Then I don't have to be quite so fine with the brush and try to make a good, um, a good wash quite so much. I can allow the brush to, to or the water to do some of that uh, painting for me. And right along the bottom of this, I'm gonna put a nice, again, this is just burnt umber, straight burnt umber, fairly thick. All right, I just wanna let it touch the, I just barely wanna let it touch that water. And oh my God, look at it, all of a sudden, <laughs> It looks like it's got that, it looks like it's now got some dimension to it just by doing it that way. It's kind of a fun way to do it. Kind of a fun way. It's all a fun, I shouldn't say kind of, it's all a fun way to do this. But, you know, it's really satisfying to uh, take a look at this and, and have the water help you paint. Right, let's, let's let it work for us. There are times when we can let it work for us, and there are times when it's work, definitely working against us. And so if we can help it to work with us, so much the better. All right, I'm just going to get this wet. Same thing, only on this one, right? On this one, is my painting tilted or flat? Uh, my, my, my desk is tilted. I will admit. Uh, this one we have a little bit more to paint because um, it, it, we can see so much of the cap of this. So we've got to paint down this way a little bit more uh, down the whole body of, of this. There we go, something like that. That flow is satisfying to watch. It's fun, it's nice. 
like I said, you can't always do it. You can't always allow that water to, to do what it wants to do, but sometimes we can. Artie, you love all, all my paintings. <laughs> I know you've been watching for a long time. I don't know that you should love all of my paintings. I, I've got some clunkers, uh, just like everybody else. But uh, but I, I I I will say thank you for that. It's very kind of you to say. I want to I do want to be appreciative and and say thank you. Of course, you probably only see the stuff I want you to see too. <laughs> I, I don't let you see all of it. Uh, now see, this is where uh, my my like I said my table is. Slant it a little bit. I could take a little bit of color out of here. I don't want to take too much color out of here, though, because where I have this, oh, 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 let me do this, where I have this brown and it's run up a little bit, I don't want to take all that away, I, but I do want to take a little bit of color out of there. So that little light right there should, to your eye, look like that's where that mushroom bends over, right? Burp. The skin of that mushroom is stretched right there, and that's why it looks like that. So, uh, but I, but you gotta have that little bit of light. I, I've I, I've said plenty of times you gotta have lights and you gotta have darks in watercolors. And if you have all mediums, your watercolor just kind of looks meh, right? It can be a lovely composition. If it's all mediums, it's just kind of uh, okay. But it's the it's the lights, it's the super lights and the super darks that really are going to make your paintings pop. And in this painting, in this painting, those are my lights, right? I I, I can tell I'm going to have to come in and put some other darks in underneath here, not too many, but a few. But we got to have those lights on there. Probably should probably should make my lights even lighter. My darks even darker. Ooh, it might have a little bit. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, to, to the live accent. I haven't been into watch in forever. Like God, life gets in the way. Um, you're stuck in bed, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect time to hang out and watch. I hope you're stuck in bed, um, not because you're sick or or feeling ill. That wouldn't be cool, but But either way, I'm glad you're here and, and watching. Minty, hi, Kelly. Notice the same about quill brushes. Uh-oh, what, what did I miss about quill brushes? Uh, for normal round brushes, I like a 6 or 8, but quill sizing is not the same. Uh, oh, yes, quill sizing is is quite bonkers. That it is. There, yes. You cannot judge a quill size brush the same as you would a round brush. They just, they're, they're not, I don't know who sizes them, but they obviously don't work in the, on the same floor at whatever factory they make these things at. I think I let that one sit too long and that one got a little too dry. Yeah, so this is a, right, this is a four in this brush and you can see that's bigger of my quill and that's bigger than my 12 round. Right, so this four is quite large, and where's the other quill I had up here? This is a three. You can see even it's pretty big. This is a size three. I don't know that that makes a whole lot of difference. What's this one? This one's a two. Look at that. So even that two is about the same of this of this quill is about the size of that of this twelve. They're just they're all over the place. They are, they literally are all over the place. Um, I guess that's kind of true with lots of stuff though, right? You go in, you buy a pair of pants at one place and you get it one size and it fits perfect or a shirt and it fits perfect. And you go to another store and you buy the same size shirt and you're going, wait a minute. Did you guys not talk to that other factory and figure out what a, the size whatever should be like. Seems like somewhere along the line in human history we'd be able to come up with what a standard size is. <laughs> oh no, lab accident, you're stuck because of fatigue due to health issues. Uh, 
you outdid your stubbornness today. <laughs> you can't sit up long. Well, I don't like that you can't sit up long enough to paint. Uh, that's not good. You should always be able to paint. I will admit, I today, whew, I, I I got a new job. I didn't get a new job. That's the, it, it is a new job, but it's not at a new place. It's a new position uh, at the same place. I've been working for a long time, and I've had some trying days lately. And I came, I come home, and I tell my wife, I'm like, oh my god, I'm I am friggin' exhausted, tired today. She's like, well, what'd you do? And then I explain it. She goes, oh, that's the same stuff you did the other day. I go, yeah, but <laughs> either this time I did more of it or it was in a more stressful situation or whatever. And today I did the same stuff I do every every day. So I love doing it. I, I, I love my new position. I would I would enjoy it if it were my, my old position too. Uh, I come into work. I do what I do today. Well, it also didn't hurt that it was you know, like super hot here today too. Uh, but I came home and I'm like, I am wiped out. I was like, I, I might even call off the show tonight. And my wife, I got to give her credit for this. She was like, you know what? You love doing those shows. She goes, don't call it off. Don't don't stop. Do your show. And she's like, I'll bet you by the time it's done. You're feeling better than you were before. And you know what? Don't, don't tell her this. I think she's right. All right, so these are kind of turning out kind of cool, actually, with that color. Um, I just kind of picked this on the fly because I didn't think these those others would look good, but I think these look pretty good. Right? They are looking pretty good. I, I know I might be tempted to eat a couple of these mushrooms. I mean, especially knowing that it's the red ones with the white dots that you really have to watch out for. I'll let somebody else eat those. No, that's not true. I wouldn't let anybody eat those. I'm not that cruel. Uh, thanks, Mindy Michael. I'm making screenshots. <laughs> you, there's no need to uh, make screenshots of all of these. Um, I'm happy to. Uh, if you are if you're so inclined, you can um, go over to uh, my Discord channel. There's you can ask questions of anything over there. I, I'll I'll take pictures and just post them up there if you want, or tell you exactly what brushes I have over there. Don't stress about trying to get stuff right. Or we're trying to get stuff right now. I guess that's a better way to say it. Not get stuff right. Get stuff right now. Just enjoy the video and um, and ask any questions that you want. There you go. Look at that. That's looking pretty cool. <clears throat> Let's see. I like them. It, Works really nicely. It's working really nicely. Let's see. I can. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna get this little guy down here while I'm while I'm working in this area. This is always a danger for me, and I and I and I shouldn't paint this guy uh, because the next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint is gonna be right over here, and I'm gonna have to reach across this, and then before I know it, I'm gonna get my <laughs> I'm gonna get my elbow in this, and it's gonna turn out bad. But sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> Just I have to I have to paint. Uh, so, I have to paint in such a manner that I'm gonna get some on myself sometimes. There we go. I, I think I need to help this paint a little bit on this little guy. There we go. And I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize what these caps look like. Uh, because um, I, I want I want them to get the feel of that roundness. Like this one, look at look. This one's really dark up here, darker than the other ones, much darker than this one. And look, it it doesn't look out of place. It looks like a real mushroom there, and that that white layer right there really helps to lend some credence to that being 
some real dimension on that. And this one, to a lesser extent, right? Maybe this one grew out a little further, or maybe didn't get quite as much sunlight. Uh, but that white right there, right next to that dark, really helps uh, bring these to life a little bit. So, is that dry? That's dry enough. Lights next to darks really do help out. What's this one kind of look like? Let's see what this one kind of looks like. Burnt umber, a little bit of this azo orange. Yeah, is that good? That's good. Something like that. This one looks like here. Let's see. Roseville. Kyle. Oh, Kyle Vaughn, and thank you for your painting. I'm learning a lot. Okay, good. I, <laughs> I love your mushrooms and the use of wet on wet. When, <laughs> when wet on wet works, and it's a wonderful thing to, to use. <laughs> uh, from Hot Roseville. I hope it's not too hot. Is that Roseville in California? Kyle? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, near, near Sacramento. Right. I get an extra rest this weekend, so that should help. Oh, yes. That's right. It's the fourth uh, this weekend, so everybody's going to get a little extra rest. I'm in Phoenix. Woo! Oh, my Lord. I, I would not want to be in Phoenix now. Phoenix seems warm. I can't complain. I really can't complain. I will complain. <laughs> I shouldn't. I won't complain much. Because while I work inland, where it's quite warm, I live right here on the, on the ocean where it's nice and cool. I've got a lot of uh, offers. Uh, Eliza, you're back. All right. Um, <laughs> Eliza says it looks fantastic. Uh, Callie, Natalie, I think you win. Your washes must be drying very fast. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, uh, so I have, I have lots of uh, guys on my team that live even further inland and... And one guy on my team was saying, man, he doesn't even want to go home. His air conditioner is broken. It was 105 at his house uh, the other day. And at night, it got down into the 90s. And he was, he was, he's over the heat already. It's been hot for three days. And he's over the heat already. And I, <clears throat> and when I drive home, uh, this is why I shouldn't complain too much. When I drive home, literally, I get to within oh, about a mile of my house, and I run into a big giant wall of fog and the temperature drops about 30 degrees. <laughs> so while it'll be, you know, easily 80 degrees in town where I work, I drive home to my little sleepy seaside village where I live, and this time of the summer here, I know you're all going to hate me and you're all going to go to a different YouTube channel. You're all going to quit uh, listening and watching. This time of year here in my town, uh, it'll get up to 65. If it gets up to 70, it's a hot day. <laughs> it's, it's unbearably hot if it gets up to 70 here where I live. <laughs> Lab, uh, Lab, you're stuck in humid heat. Oh, oh, sometimes that's the worst. It just, you can't, it's, it's oppressive sometimes. I grew up in humid heat and, oh, that can be unbearable. You can't get away from it. It's just everywhere. A little bit more brown and that's way too much orange. We can't have that much orange. There we go. Look at that. 
I don't know, this guy looks something like that. Um, let's see, Natalie, not much painting this time of year, <laughs> but while washes dry super fast out there in the desert. But Natalie, it must not stop everybody from painting because there are some unbelievably good uh, desert paintings and desert, desert painters, right? I mean, I, I know I've seen some that are just outstanding and they must paint all summer long. I have to turn this a little bit for two reasons. It's, it's easier to get the point of my brush in there and then, and then since I just painted at the bottom, uh, I don't want to get my, <laughs> it's turned out nicely. I don't want to get my a palm in, in my painting there. I, I do, I'm, I'm famous for doing that. One swipe here, a little across, and then a little bit of touch up here. We can just coax these colors, just barely coax these colors where we want them to go. I've taken one painting class in my life, and I guess other than like, I don't even think I took one in high school. I think in junior high school I might have taken a painting class, an art class of some sort. Like one painting class, and it was at a community college. God, it was some six, seven, eight, six, seven years ago, something like that. Now, whoops, I'm just out of the line there. It was um, two years, three years before. This is a terrible way to measure time. I'm beginning to measure time pre-COVID or post-COVID. It was a couple of years pre-COVID. I just, oh my God. Uh, see, lab accident is so humid, you got to keep <laughs> those little uh, desiccant packets in your paints. Holy cow. Uh, I took I took this one painting class, and it was horrible. I'm just going to say that. It was, I, I didn't enjoy the instructor all that much. I don't think he was very helpful. Uh, maybe it was just that my expectations of the class were too high or some such thing. I don't know. Uh, but I did get one really nice thing out of it. And, and he was a big wet-on-wet wet guy. And so he would, he would make us paint wet-on-wet wet just like this so that you understood... Uh, how the paint is going to run, how it's going to stay wet on your paper for a while, what things are going to happen with it. Oops. Um, and so, I, so I, I'll take that away. That was a good thing, but the, the class itself was uh, not so good. I want to take another class. It was, if for no other reason, then it was fun to, it was fun to uh, uh, be forced to sit around with some other watercolor painters. And to be able to pick their brain to see how and why they paint the way they paint. So, Liza says, Michael, are you telling us you are mostly self-taught? If so, I have mad respect. I am. Mo <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I don't know that I need any any kind of respect for it. But yes, I, I'll tell you exactly how I learned how to paint. It's kind of a funny story, but yes, I am. I'm self-taught. Um, I I I work with computers all day long. I have for a long time, many years, a long time. And at one point, I was I was tracked how long I was in front of a computer, and it was literally like, you know, 17, 18 hours a day. I was like, holy cow! I can't I can't do that. I will, First of all, I'm going to be blind by the time I'm, you know, 50 or whatever. Uh, and and I'm, I'm older than that now. But uh, So I, I was looking for something to do that was non-computer um, related. Something that I could do to get away from looking at a computer monitor all day, every day. And 
how I how I decided upon it, I couldn't tell you, but I was like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take up watercolor painting, and I went down to the local art shop at the college I was I was working at, and I said, give me some give me some paints that I can use, and they sold me some watercolors, and it's been on with watercolors ever since. And uh, and I, I, paint, I started painting little pictures, you know, little tiny pictures, two inches by two inches, something like that. Um, eventually, I met uh, the woman that I married, and she she's an actual artist. <laughs> she has a degree in art from an actual art school and she was very encouraging as I would hope <laughs> she would be and, and um, it wanted me to continue with it and continue with it and so we were we were at a local art uh, show here in town it's called the art in the park you know local artists come and they sell their wares in the park and whatnot and, you know, it's it's all very exciting or whatever um, and we were walking around and I kept going, God, I could do that. I could do that. Boy, I, I, I'm sure I could do that. And, and I think she got a little upset with me and she went, look, it's time for you to either shut up or put up. <laughs> See, if you're going to paint, uh, pictures like that, start painting pictures like that. I'm tired of hearing that you can do it. I want to see that you can, that you actually do do it. And so from that point on, I actually started painting uh, larger paintings, and I would do it on my lunch hour. I would do it uh, when I came home. Anytime I could find a half an hour or something to break my paints uh, out and do it, and eventually it turned into something that I, I do all the time, and, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So let's see. Uh, let's see, I don't know, lab accident, you, you got a trick of some sort to remember, I got up yammering away and you guys were talking, let's see, uh, lab accident bought some on Amazon of uh, putting, oh, you're talking about the, oh, the desiccant, uh, pack to put in with your watercolor palettes, that is a good idea, that's for sure. Already, I want to start plein air painting when it's cool, when it cools off too. I even bought a little stool to take with me. Uh, I oh here I got I got this. This is this is what I do. I actually have a stool, but I I went out and I bought an old backpack, just a you know an old backpack that you put on. It didn't cost much of anything. It's just big enough for a palette, some paper, some tissues. Uh, a water jug or whatever, put it all right in there. Your hands are free when you're walking. And I, I do a lot of walking along the beach here when I do go plein air painting. And um, it all fits in there. I get there, I unpack it. I can paint as long as I want. I normally take a radio with me. I've got extra water you can drink or whatnot. And when I'm done, it all packs right back up in there. And then I hike it out and I can go any, pretty much anywhere I want to go. Let's see. Uh, lab accident. Your your mother minored in fine arts painting in college. Wow. So she taught homeschool art class for the local homeschool kids uh, when I was growing up. That's how you learn color theory. Uh, my wife is trying to get me to paint. My our kids are homeschooled, and she's trying to get me to teach a homeschool class. But I, I got a, enough going on. <laughs> I'm gonna put that off for a little while. Um, yeah, Kelly, you're, you had instructed it, had us only use black and white eggs and skulls. Oh my Lord. We had to, we had to find old magazines and copy pictures out of old magazines. It was, a, I don't know, it was a weird class. Um, already that sounds cool. Just rolling sand. Let's see. The painting is coming along beautifully. Thank you. It's, it's getting there. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm. Trying to give it a little time to dry. We're going to do a little bit more here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm re-entering art in the hopes of eventually escaping computer life as well. Oh, computer life is is tough. It's tough on your body because you sit for long 
uh, works a time. It's tough on your eyes. I would get home and my eyes hurt. They're all red. Oh, it's horrible. Let's see. Uh, Liza, what a great story. Thank you. Um, that sounds like a great way to learn. My mom always thought I was just making a mess. Oh, no, I'm sure that's not true, Natalie. <laughs> oh, Bicycle Repairman is here. Great to see you make it. Uh, Liza, for some strange reason, I started in oils. Oh, whew, and I know it's my favorite, and I'm good at it, but I keep chasing the elusive watercolors. Oh, my Lord. Oh, but waters are, uh, uh, watercolors are so easy to, to set up. They're so easy to clean up. It's, uh, I, no, I, I say that never having worked in oils. <laughs> it's just, it seems like it's a lot. Uh, Kelly, I'm going urban sketching for the first time. Oh, that's going to be exciting, Kelly. I hope that uh, you can report back to us how your urban sketching goes. Urban sketching is a lot of fun. Um, if, if I can give you any advice, don't get caught. Don't get caught up too much in trying to get the exact form. Get relative forms, and, and it makes everything easier. I think I do a thousand watercolors, and only like one of them. <laughs> yeah, <that's>, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's. I think we all do it. I'm, uh, Liza, I'm sure you have more than one. That's a that's a fantastic uh, watercolor painting, but. I always say watercolor isn't as hard as everybody makes it out to be, but I, I, I say that a little tongue-in-cheek, it is still a difficult medium. It takes a little forethought and a little understanding on how colors have to be built uh, if you're going to be laying any washes. Let's see, I never got to mess with the paints, but I was allowed to use color pencils or pastels. I never... I have I have uh, watercolor pencils over here. I'm thinking about doing some watercolor pencils on a Wednesday night. It's just something I've never really picked up, but it's kind of cool, and I've done a little bit with it. It seems really fun, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, Lab Accent, maybe if you uh, stop back sometime, you can actually give us some advice on uh, watercolor pencils or, or pastels or whatnot. Uh, I ended up reteaching myself about six years ago to draw and then to paint. Wow. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to draw. <laughs> drawing, I think, I think we're all too hard on ourselves when it comes to drawing. We all want to, I, and I, I say this because this is kind of how I see it, is we all want to... Um, we're taught from early on that we should be realist painters, right? Everything we've done in primary school and secondary school is to be, you know, basically a realist painter. And so we all get kind of caught up in this realist painting uh, motif. And then when ours don't look super realist, then we all get a little fired up about it and why doesn't it look right and how come I can't do this and how come I can't do that and, and really it shouldn't be like that at all. There's, there are a lot of ways to paint that aren't realists and a lot of beautiful painting that, that happens even without the proper form on things. You know, the, the exact form without copying the exact, I don't mean the right form. <laughs> You're trying to figure out perspective. Perspective is uh, perspective is one of those things. Are you doing one? Are you trying to figure out uh, one point, two point, or three point perspective? I actually found now this was kind of this is kind of interesting. I found I don't remember if it was at like a a Goodwill or a th some kind of a thrift store. I found a a textbook. Now this is this is this may be of interest to you. It, it also might not. It was like a textbook from the 1930s or 1940s teaching perspective, uh, perspective drawing, and I thought it was absolutely fascinating. I had I never took any classes on perspective, and I. I didn't know people taught it like that, but it was trying to teach you how to see 
and draw in perspective. It was very interesting. Um, let's see. I read draw. Oh, let's see, live accent. You're iffy with pencils still, but use them to add line detail. Yeah, that's, that's all I use them too. They're great for individual details, specific details. Um, and I, I don't have a, a ton of faith in my ability to do too much more than that. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. All right, I want to just get a mix of colors. I want to strengthen this stuff down here. I don't know if I don't know if we're going to need to put on it. You know, this is sitting on that uh, piece of wood. You can see that it's sitting on that piece of wood. Uh, I'm not convinced that we are going to need to put on all that wood detail here to make this look nice. I'm going to put some dark up here. Grab this green around that. Watch this. This is also the time where I, I go, oh, I'm starting to get tired. What time? Oh, my Lord. Wow, we've been doing this an hour and a half. Oh, oh, oh. I, didn't, I certainly didn't think we were going that long. But I can feel myself starting to get tired. Right, I'm just going to leave this green here. I mean, that's a bit of moss or something like that. One point perspective. Okay. <laughs> your best lab accent. Your best paintings happen when you're sleep deprived. How's that possible? All right. Let's go underneath here. I don't want that big puddle there. We're going to some color under here. Let's give a little bit of this blue under here. All right, that blue will help maybe push that back just a little bit. And the other thing that this is going to do, this darkening here, right around this, it's going to push this background back. And that's a good thing, right? The more we can push this background back, the further forward we can bring these mushrooms and the more they're going to stand out. There we go. I don't think I want to do too much more with that. Look, okay, so before uh, this whole background, or I guess this is the foreground, the middle ground, I don't know what we're going to call this. It's really, it's the foreground, but was a lot lighter and the mushrooms kind of blended in a little bit. Now... That background is darker. The mushrooms really pop out that little bit more, don't they? Um, that is super cool, Michael and Lisa, to sort of let myself just let it happen. Just let it, there you go. I would love to learn how to actually use watercolor pencils. Okay, uh, I'll put that on my list. Uh, most of my details is... <laughs> I'd love to learn how to use watercolor pencils. Uh, okay, I'll put... I'll put watercolor pencils on my list of things, and I'll see. Uh, I'll see if I can't <laughs> figure out and and be become a little bit more comfortable with uh, watercolor pencils. I think there's. I think it's. I've done, I've done a few uh, paintings. With, no, paintings. I've done a few drawings with it. I guess they're paintings too, and it turned out kind of cool. And I and I, and I, I want to use my just. I just haven't. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to darken up a little bit here and hope that this darkening doesn't really screw up some of this painting. And so I'm going to try to be a little careful here. Uh, you see me, you see me reaching across this way. I've got water, I've got water over there and I've got paper towels over there. So I, I just, I'm going back and forth and Dabbing my, uh, dabbing my uh, paintbrush off, trying to get just the right bit of water on it, right? The, the, just the right consistency of water. Right, now I'm doing this, and I know, I know, I know 
then I'm probably going to ruin some of that nice brown line we put on here to start with. I, I know that. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it's going to ruin it, but it might not. It might not help it. Let's let's put it that way. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad. This one might be a little dark. We can lighten. Just I'll just pick up a little bit of that with that color. There we go. I can put just a little bit of dark here. Do we have any other areas that need just a little bit of dark? I think just down here might need a little bit of that. And we've got a couple of other things to do here still. Okay, I'm going to be satisfied with that. Whether I'm satisfied with that or whether I'm not satisfied with that, I'm going to be satisfied with that. And the reason I'm going to be satisfied with that is I'm to a place where I'm not certain if, do, ouch, if doing more is necessarily going to help out. And when I get to that place, uh, I've learned for myself, it's a good time to step back. <laughs> it's a good time to step back and not necessarily do more because if I can't see that I'm adding any benefit, I probably am not adding any benefit. Okay, so I'm going to stop with the shading. I've, I, I accomplished what I wanted to here. I've got a couple of other dark areas here, here, here that I think I got exactly what I want. The, the thing I want to do now is um, add a few of these lines. Oh, and I should say I've dropped down to a rigger brush. I have these riggers. Uh, these are from Zen Art. Um, I didn't buy these. They sent these to me to try out. And most of the set, I think, is, is okay. But I, I love these because they've got this triangle place to hold here. It makes it really comfortable. And while I think they're smaller brushes, sometimes I don't always hold enough water. I think they're... A rigger brush holds just about enough. I think it, it does a nice job, and I and I actually actually really like these. So, kind of just in the shaded areas here. I'm not going to put any of this in the light. I'm going to drop a few lines so we can see. I guess that's where the the gills are. RDC is looking good. These are looking starting to pop. They're starting to pop. They're starting to to get a little better. I don't need I don't need to put the entire line on here. I don't need to do I don't need I don't okay. All I need to put on here is just enough detail so that whoever views this knows what that is. Right? I have a friend who is a watercolor painter. I always tell her she's much better than me. And she always says, you don't state so much in a watercolor painting. You suggest it. So I want to suggest in here that there are all these gills in lines on these mushrooms. Uh, I'm just, it's just a suggestion. If you want to see them, here's a little bit here that will help you see those. But I'm not going to put all of them on and force them on you, right? I don't. That's not what I want to do. I want your your eye to pick these up on its own. So just a few lines here and there, and not even in, not even in the bright uh, sunlit area, right? That's that sunny area. That doesn't, maybe that's not for us. We just want to operate here, kind of in this shadowy area. Give a few lines here and there. I'll give a couple of more. And how many of these you do, it's totally up to you. How dark you want to do them, totally up to you. 
if you're if you're going to do this yourself at home, I would suggest starting out with a with fewer and lighter, and you can always add more and darken them back up. Lab accidents. <laughs> All of yours are rounds or quills. Ooh. Rounds and quills. You can actually do almost everything with just rounds and quills. But it is nice to have some other ones. There we go. There we go. Uh, and I think, like I said, <laughs> if I do more, it's not necessarily going to make this better. I think what I'm going to do is sign my name on this one somewhere. I don't know. I'll put it down here. There we go. And call this one done. Um, as I like to do. Very nicely done as always. Thank you, Liza. Um, as I always uh, do or always try to do, I want to do a little self-reflection on this. And while I'm thinking about this, we were talking about... Um, granulation a little bit earlier look at the granulation in here look look at how this is all dropped out it adds look at this man it adds it, a lot of texture to this um, I think it looks fantastic so uh, so here's where I went well with this and you can agree with me <laughs> or not you can put it in the chat uh, let me know what you think I did well and what I didn't do well. I loved how these caps turned out. Um, I love that I I didn't get overzealous with the paint. And we've got these light spots in here. I actually, well, let me do this. Let me grab something to point with. Right, we've got all these light spots in here. Here's one that kind of way up here. This this has no place in there. This But... It, contextually with all of these other ones, it kind of fits, right? We, you know, nature doesn't make everything perfect. It's kind of cool how they all how they all fit in here. They're all different and they all fit in here and they all look like they have a lot of texture, a lot of roundness uh, to them. I love that. I do like the general shading across most of these. Uh, I really think if I were to, if I were to do this again and if I were to do this on my own, if I'm sitting down on a Saturday afternoon, I probably, in all honesty, I would go back and I would add an even darker layer on on this side. Uh, I would make this even darker so I have a bigger transition from light to dark, light to dark, light to dark on all of these. Uh, we're already adding. Where are we at? Holy cow! An hour and forty minutes. So I'm not going to do it here, and, and I learned this from the first painting. Don't paint these gills in the light area. They just look a little wrong. They're not wrong, but they just look better in the shadow areas. And so I only put those there. So that, I think, looks really nice. Uh, where I think I kind of lost it a little bit is um, in here, as I'm looking back on this, and again, this is an hour long painting or hour and a half painting on, on YouTube. It, it would be different if I was doing this on a, you know, on a Saturday or a Sunday morning or something like this. This really probably does need some kind of detail in through here. It doesn't look bad. And, and I'm not against this because uh, one of the things I've always said is I want... I want the viewer to look here. I want the viewer to look at the subject area. I don't care if the viewer ever looks over here or over here or over here. This is where I want the viewer's eyes to be drawn the whole time, right there. So I, I, I don't hate this, but by the same token, I don't think this adds anything other than um, the color to help these pop off the page. Anyways... That's it. I like it. In general, I think it's I think it turned out pretty nice. I, I really like this. It'd be good with uh oh, oh, lab accent, you're gonna be good with some rest. Good, 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 good. That's great. Uh Callie Flower says the caps look really soft and perfect. They they do they do look soft. I'm glad we didn't go with the gray color. These look much more edible, right? If I'm walking through the forest, I'm much more likely to grab these ones in 
throw them in a salad or on a pizza or something like that, right? <laughs> okay, uh, that's all I've got for you guys. As always, down below, where, where am I pointing to? Down, down below, uh, if you like this, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below. I think um, I think I ask for suggestions for upcoming uh, topics for Wednesdays. Uh, if you've got something, throw it down there. I'll take it into consideration. I'll be happy to take it into consider consideration. I'm going to take a look at my watercolor pencils and my watercolor crayons, which are even more fun than the watercolor pencils. Uh, I have linked to... My social media down below, I'm trying to do more with social media. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Vice Square Mayor, that looks good as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, there are links down below, not only to the social my social media. There's links to my website. Uh, there's a donation link down below if you want to help keep the studio up and running. If you don't, that's fine. It's not a high pressure thing. I'm, I'm going to continue to make videos as long as I feel uh, good and able to. So, but it would be much appreciated if you can, if you can afford to do that. Uh, again, like I said, if you can't, I'm not concerned in the least. Uh, I thank you all for coming and making my Wednesday evening so enjoyable. I hope we can all meet back here again next Wednesday. I'll try to put up on Discord what I'm going to be painting and maybe in the community channel on YouTube if I can remember to it. <laughs> yes, Callie Flowers. I do have watercolor crayons and they're fantastic. <laughs> I love the watercolor crayons. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys this evening. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll hope to see you all back here next Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific. Until then, take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>